don't uh, remember off the top of my head the exact year that it was, um, but I can tell you who I was with and where I was with when I purchased my first guitar. But the story starts a lot earlier than that. Um, I grew up, well, I haven't done that yet. Uh, I spent my youth listening to a very wide range of music. Um, anything from gospel to classic rock, some hip hop, a lot of acoustic folk music, which is still where I spend most of my time, uh, a lot of jazz and stuff like that. But at any rate, my, my first real influence was Gordon Lightfoot, uh, as I've alluded to in the past. I was 14 when I met Gordon for the first time. Um, he's an incredibly kind human being, a prolific songwriter, obviously. His career speaks for itself. He's still out there doing what he loves, uh, which is really impressive and uh, honestly is an inspiration and continues to be an inspiration. Uh, I met him subsequently several times uh, after that, but I, when I was 14 uh, at the State Theater in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I, I just remember being in awe of how kind he was to us. Um, and I had front row tickets and uh, it was awesome. And that is my earliest motivation to have purchased a guitar uh, was uh, because of Gordon Lightfoot. And I did so with uh, my best friend, Brett, probably around 2003, 2002, somewhere in there. Uh, and that guitar was purchased at Marshall Music in East Lansing in the Frandor Shopping Center, which is still there. Uh, and this guitar happens to be the one that uh, I purchased that day. It was a fairly cheap guitar. Um, I think I paid $319 for it back then. But I absolutely fell in love with what stood out to me was the grain of the back. It's quilted bubinga. Uh, and I said, I have to have this guitar. And so the rest, I guess, is kind of history there. But uh, I haven't played this guitar in a very long time. Um, I had some repairs that needed to be made, uh, which have since been made. It's not the easiest guitar in the world to play uh, out of my acoustics, but uh, nevertheless, it will always be my first guitar, and it is not for sale. <laughs> uh, none of my guitars are for sale. I made that mistake once, and I'll never do it again. Um, that having been said, uh, shortly thereafter, this was a DS10 QB, the QB standing for Quilted Bubinga. Uh, as I started to learn how to play more and more Gordon Lightfoot songs, it became very apparent to me that I needed a 12 string. Uh, and Washburn happened to have uh, a matching 12 string minus the Quilted Bubinga uh, backs, but uh, it's based off of the same model as this. Uh, I purchased that mm, probably two years later. Um, and when I would have been probably 20 years old, I had the opportunity to meet Gordon Lightfoot again, and I had my 12-string with me. And he brought me backstage uh, and was kind enough to sign my 12-string. Um, and I've hardly played it since because I don't want to ruin that, that beautiful signature of his. He has one of the, I collect a lot of autographs. Uh, he has probably the nicest... Uh, autograph at least used to um, out of anybody I've ever collected. Uh, so he of course made the 12 string famous as he did his six string but uh, he had um, some Gibson B45 12 N's uh, from the 60s uh, which were handmade in Kalamazoo, Michigan at the old Gibson factory. He started out with uh, the plain uh, style of guitar, and uh, by the time uh, the mid, late 60s, early 70s rolled around, uh, he had a cherry star, uh, excuse me, sunburst paint job on his guitars. Um, and those are the ones that he still tours with today, uh, as can be seen on the cover of the Sundown album. Um, so in the last year or so, I've wanted another 12 string, actually it's been about 12 years, one that I can excuse me, two years, one that I can play, 
And I said, well, if I'm going to replace one that Gordon Lightfoot signed, and he's still the reason I love a 12-string guitar, I might as well find myself a B4512N, which I did. Um, it's in phenomenal shape. It's in 1970, uh, believed to have still been made at the Kalamazoo factory. That's right around the time that uh, they were transitioning some of their construction techniques to uh, Nashville. Uh, if I'm wrong about that, you can call me out in the comments below. But that's the story on this guitar. Um, I bought it. It needed some work. Um, the wonderful Russ over at North Coast Guitars uh, took the guitar in and made it one of his own, like he always does for me. Did a, uh, a neck reset, uh, re-glued the bridge, and uh, did a setup for me, and the guitar absolutely plays like butter. It, it really, really is an incredible guitar. Um, sounds incredible. It plays so easy. Um, it's just... Just an absolutely, absolutely phenomenal guitar. Uh, I'll do a video of that at some point. But uh, so, uh, Gordon Lightfoot will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, and in a roundabout way is the reason that this entire music studio exists. With all of that having been said, I think it's time to give some well-deserved and long overdue thank yous to the friends and family that have helped inspire and construct this beautiful studio and uh, bar that overlooks it. Um, so I, I'll do that in chronological order as best I can. All the way back to my college days, I have to thank my good friend David, whom I met when I was learning how to fly in the aviation program. He was a flight instructor for the university and has been a major musical influence in my life ever since. Um, my first exposure to a home studio was at his house. His entire living room had been set up as a studio uh, and still continues to be. Uh, that was my first exposure, and I just remember how great it is, how great it was uh, to record music with him way back when. We called ourselves the Broke Pilots. I guess technically we're still together. Uh, we make music from time to time as life allows. Um, so, David, thank you. And uh, moving along to my friend Ben, I have to give you a shout out as a thank you. You finished your basement a uh, year before I started this project and uh, you helped with a lot of information and photos and motivation. Um, so I'm, I apologize for all of the mass text messages that uh, you received back in those early days, but thank you. Um, to my friend Brent, who has always been available at a moment's notice uh, to help when it's needed. For example, when someone who shall not be named saws us into uh, an electrical wire that feeds the shop, trying to make room in the ceiling for a light for the dartboard and a 10 o'clock phone call at night and he's here 20 minutes later to help me fix the problem. To uh, a couple of years later with all of his late night help well after midnight for a couple nights in a row, hooking up all of the electrical, the light switches to the panel and everything. Uh, this would not be what it is without you, so thank you for that. Uh, to my friend Davis, who was a big, big, big help uh, of the manual labor with this project um, on, on many occasions. Uh, the windows had to be resized for this all to work, so the back of the house had to come off. And he helped me with that. We put in a new slider. He helped me hang all of the doors down here, helped me build the bar, helped me put in the cabinets, the vanity in the, in the bathroom, the list goes on and on, but a lot of the heavy lifting uh, he helped with and almost didn't complain about it. At any rate, thank you, sir. Um, I don't even know where to begin with my thank you for these next two guys. Um, to my Uncle Bob and Cousin Austin, I can't say favorite Uncle Bob, this is a public forum, I can't play favorites. Um, but seriously, outside of this entire two-year project, uh, the support and um, camaraderie with music, and the appreciation for it uh, between us, I, I really appreciate. And I can't thank you enough for the design help, the technique help, everything to you both, um, from you both, for the late night text messages and phone calls, to the early morning text messages and phone calls because of the time difference. 
Um, I, I really cannot thank you guys both enough for all of the advice you've given me over the last couple of years. Um, it's been a major influence on my life, and I really appreciate it. And last, but certainly not least, uh, to my amazing husband, who has been so supportive over the 14 and a half years we've spent together, all the times he's forgiven me for coming home with a new friend, uh, and for just encouraging me to, to do what I love to do and what I'm passionate about. I really appreciate that. I love you, and um, thank you. So... To all my other friends and family out there who have influenced me musically and encouraged me to do such, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Without further ado, let's make some music. I'll do a uh, Gordon Lightfoot piece. It's one that's been covered more than anything else, uh, 200 and some times, I believe, professionally. Uh, and it's one of his earlier tunes. So, thanks guys. In the early morning rain With a dollar in my hand With an again in my heart And my pockets full of sand I'm a long way from home And I miss my love so in the early morning rain with no place to go out on runway number nine her big A350 said to go but I'm stuck here in the grass with a pain that ever grows Now the liquor tastes so good And they all were fast Well now there she goes my friend She's rolling down at last Hear those mighty She's away in Westward Bound Far above the clouds she'll fly Where the morning rain don't fall And the sun always shines She'll be flying over This old airport's got me down It's no earthly good to me Guess I'm stuck here in the ground As cold and drunk as I might be You can't jump a jet plane Like you can a freight train So I best be on my way 